Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. We wouldn't normally be meeting like this of course, we'd much prefer to meet you face to face in some lovely hotel in London where you can meet all the authors and have a chat. But as you know, COVID-19 this year has made that impossible. So we've gone online and we're hoping actually that it will allow the award to get to an even wider audience than normal. As well as this ceremony, there are going to be 12 short films, one for each of the shortlisted titles. Every year we gift to the, each author and illustrator a portfolio of writing, drawing, messages, all of which be, have been inspired by their books. And this year we'd like to open that up to you. There's an opportunity for you to send anything in that you would like to be included in that portfolio. These have been really challenging times for our book groups when they can't meet with their uh, members very often. But we are thrilled that so many of them have been able to be involved today. So without further ado, I welcome you to the Federation of Children's Book Groups Children's Book Award Ceremony. And I hand you over to Sarah McIntyre and Philip Reeve, who are going to be our Masters of Ceremony for today. Hello, I'm Philip Reeve. And I'm Sarah McIntyre. And we're thrilled to be here to present the Children's Book Awards Ceremony. You may remember that Sarah presented last year. And it's really good to be back. We're just sorry we can't be there to present in person this year. But you know what it's like right now. So we hope that the time you save by not travelling to the ceremony will give you extra time to read more books! Yay! <laughs> so I guess we should introduce ourselves. We make books together. Like what kind of which books do we make? We make... Well... Oliver and the Sea Wigs. Cakes in Space. Pugs of the Frozen North. Oh, and what are the latest books? We've well, been doing some really good ones. What are they? Well, the latest things we've been working on are stories about a roly-poly flying pony called Kevin. And they're called... The Legend of Kevin. Kevin's Great Escape. And the new one, which is... Kevin, Kevin and, and the, the Biscuit, Biscuit Bandit. Bandit. And where did Kevin come from? Well... This is a little painting I did on a piece of driftwood about 30 years ago. And I didn't know when I painted it that this character was going to end up in books. I just thought this piece of driftwood kind of needs a roly-poly painting on it. Mm. Um, and then one, one, one time Sarah was visiting my house here on Dartmoor in the wild, wet hills of the outermost west. And she saw this painting. And uh, what did you say, Sarah? It's so cute! It's so cute! She said. I want to draw it. And then I did pictures of it and... And we can... decided, yes, here's yeah, one of Sarah's fine. pictures. And you can see he's very roly-poly. And we thought, this really looks like a Kevin. So we named him Kevin. We named him Kevin. And we started writing stories about Kevin. And the stories got longer and longer. And they turned into books. We thought we would do a special story just for you, featuring Kevin. And it's called Kevin and the Book Awards. And we're going to take you indoors, out of the wind, and read it to you. Let's go. Right, Kevin and the Book Award. This is Kevin. Kevin is a roly-poly flying pony. He comes from the wild, wet hills of the outermost west, and his favourite things are... One, biscuits. Two, having adventures with his friends Max and Daisy. And three, more biscuits. One day, Max told Kevin about the Children's Book Awards. They were very important awards, and Kevin felt a flutter of excitement in his tummy. I am in a book, he thought. And I am a roly-poly flying pony, which everyone knows is the best kind of flying pony. Surely I will win all the awards. And he thought dreamily of all the biscuits which he was sure must accompany such fine awards. But on the other side of Bumbleford, Two guinea pigs named Neville and Beyonce had also heard about the awards. They were always seeking inspiration for new daring exploits, and the thought of stealing the trophies presented a great challenge to them. Slipping out of the trap door they had cunningly built into the floor of their hutch and rappelling down to the ground, they scurried off toward Bumbleford Green, where the ceremony was about to take place. Max and Daisy flew down to the ceremony riding on Kevin. A big crowd had gathered in the marquee where two visiting authors were about to present the awards. The authors looked pleased to be there, but slightly apprehensive. 
Kevin wondered if that was because they were worried they might start tucking into the big jar of biscuits on the award table. He couldn't imagine sitting next to a big jar of biscuits and, well, just sitting there. He was a pony of action. Next to the jar were five golden cloths with little tassels on the corners covering the five awards. As the authors stood up to present, the children in the audience wriggled with anticipation. Who would win the award for the best picture book? Would it be Gaz Crust for Buster Mustard and the Flustered Custard? Or The Refugee's Battered Shoe by Penelope Hessian Kale? The authors lifted the cloth to reveal the first award, but it wasn't a trophy, but a guinea pig exercise wheel, still slowly revolving. Quickly, the authors whipped off the cloths from the next two awards. Those, too, had been stolen and replaced with everyday guinea pig-related objects. A pile of dirty bedding sawdust and a third-place rosette from the Bumbleford guinea pig show. Under the last two cloths were not guinea pig-related items, but actual guinea pigs looking shifty and clutching the awards they had stolen. Before anybody could grab them, they scurried off, leapt into their getaway car, and made their escape. Zigzagging between the legs of the startled crowd, the tiny car zoomed off down Bumbleford High Street. But Kevin, thinking unusually quickly, flapped up into the air, flew over the speeding cars, and sat down on the road in front of it. There was a loud ba which is the noise a miniature getaway car makes when it bounces off the tummy of a roly-poly flying pony. Neville and Beyonce tumbled out. If it hadn't been for that roly-poly flying pony, we'd have gotten clean away with it, they grumbled as Max and Daisy ran up to gather the stolen awards. Now we can have a proper award ceremony, said Daisy. I'm hoping Esmeralda Dropcloth's new vampire novel will win the books for older readers category. Kevin said, I hope I'm going to win because I'm in books. Are you? said Max and Daisy, looking confused. They went back to the marquee, and Kevin sat eagerly in the front row while the authors announced the award winners. Would he feature in the best picture book section? His stories have pictures. Would he win the most hard-hitting social realism award? His books dealt with heavy and complicated issues. Would he win the award for most roly-poly book? Of course. Kevin's wings flapped eagerly as the authors read out the winners. And the writers and illustrators who had won came up blushing to receive their awards. Kevin's wings began to sag. Had he won nothing at all? But then, when all the awards had been given out, the authors made a special announcement. None of this would have been possible, they said, without the bravery and quick thinking of a certain roly-poly flying pony. Kevin looked around wondering to whom they might be referring. Kevin, they said, for you, we have a special Bravest Pony Award. And they handed him the huge jar of biscuits. And if you're a roly-poly flying pony, that's the best sort of award. The end. So, now that Kevin is happy, we'll move on to presenting the real awards. Stick around for the end of the video if you want to learn how to draw Neville and Beyonce in their getaway car. Yeah, we can't promise there are going to be any biscuits or guinea pig related shenanigans, but we can promise a short list stuffed with terrific books. I wonder who's going to take home the trophy this year? Let's start with the books for younger children. First up we have Jazz Dog. Written and illustrated by Marie Voigt and published by Oxford University Press. Next up, we have Matisse's Magical Trail. Written by Tim Hopgood and illustrated by Sam Boughton. Published by Oxford University Press. And finally, The Runaway P. Written by Jarton Poskett and illustrated by Alex Wilmore. Published by Simon and & Schuster. And here to announce the winner are children from the North Somerset group of the Federation of Children's Book Groups. And the winner is... The Runaway Pig! Yeah! Hey, 
I've got something to tell you. We have won the Federation of Children's Book Groups Awards, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is our book, it's The Runaway Pete, and I'm Jack, and I'm the guy that wrote it. And I can't tell you how happy we are. And usually when you're an author, and the illustrator Alex, my friend Alex, we sort of thank the publishers and everything. But this is a bit different. I mean, it's not just me and Alex that put the book together. There's a whole team of people at the publishers, Simon and Schuster, and uh, there's Holly, and there's Polly, and wouldn't it be good if it was Molly? But in fact, the first lady that phoned me up and said, would I write a picture book is called Alice. So Alice started all this. Thank you, Alice. But in fact, we're not really thanking them. All of us, Simon and Shuster, me and Alex, we're thanking the Federation and mainly we're thanking you because this is the only awards that young people get to vote for. And thank you so much for reading your books, having a thing, sending in your votes. It just makes the whole thing so much more fun. And as well as a trophy, we get to see some of your pee drawings. I can't wait for that. This is just so good. I'm really touched. I'm, I don't know where to go with this. Take care. Thank you. Happy reading. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for uh, voting for the Runaway P to uh, to be the winner. That's so 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 exciting for me. It's brilliant. It's um, I mean, it's just wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> it's uh, it's such a special award as well because it's voted for by all of you, the ones who are reading it, and um, that means so much to me. Also, thank you to to Jonathan for for writing this brilliant book because uh, without the story, it'd just be a P on his own there, just sort of rolling around, not really doing much. So amazing. What an amazing book he's written. I'm, I'm sure you all agree. And um, also thank you to Simon Schuster and everyone there for um, for letting me, uh, letting me illustrate this brilliant story. I'm also really, really, really looking forward to getting a, getting a trophy. Wow, never had a trophy before. That's brilliant. And also um, a portfolio of all your lovely artworks I hear, which I'm very excited to see. So um, thank you again so, 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 so much. I can't tell you how much it means to me. Thank you. Now, onto the books for younger readers. First, we have Mutant Zombies Cursed by School Trip, written by Matt Brown and illustrated by Paco Sordo, published by Usborne. Next, it's Owen and the Soldier, written by Lisa Thompson and published by Barrington Stoke. And finally, The Maker of Monsters, written by Lorraine Gregory, and published by Oxford University Press. And to announce the winner, we go back to North Somerset. And the winner is... Luton Sophie Cows High School Trip! Yeah! It won! Mutant Zombies Curse My School Trip won! Hooray! Uh, thank you so, so much. This is such an amazing, incredible, wonderful, thrilling honour uh, to have won this award. I would love to say a big thank you to everybody who voted for Mutant Zombies, but also who took part generally and voted for the books that you like. Voting for books you like is a good thing to do, I think. Big thanks to the Federation of Children's Book Groups who do such brilliant work up and down the country. Thank you too to Usborne who publish my books, especially big thanks to Becky Walker, who's my editor and who amongst other things uh, has to tell me when I use the word fart too many times and when I overuse the phrase, his trousers exploded. So thanks to Becky for that. Uh, thanks very much as well to Paco Sordo uh, the illustrator. Brilliant, talented human being, Paco. The illustrations are so good in this book, so thanks so much, Paco, uh, for all your hard work. And because I'm socially distancing um, and can't be with you, I've, I've got my own trophy here, which is my sausage dog mug, because I've got sausage dogs, and I filled it with uh, cherry cola bottles. Yum, because that makes it extra special. So listen, have a great day, and thanks so much again for this brilliant award. Hooray! Hooray! Hello, I'm Paco Sordo. I'm the illustrator of this amazing book by Matt Brown, and I am uh, very excited about this uh, whole thing, about the nomination, about the book winning the prize, and especially knowing that it's been bought by the readers. 
and we always work especially thinking on on the readers so it's a, it's a great honor and i feel really happy about it and i'm very grateful thank you very much and now on to the books for confident readers first up a pocket full of stars written by aisha bushby and published by egmont next up is d-day dog written by tom palmer and published by barrington stoke and finally wild spark written by vashti hardy and published by scholastic and for the winner, back to North Somerset. And the winner is... Dog. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Tom Palmer and this is my dog Finn. And we'd both like to say a massive thank you for voting D-Day Dog, um, the Confident Readers Children's Book Award um, category winner. We are absolutely thrilled, aren't we, Finn? We're absolutely thrilled. And we're particularly thrilled because this, this is like the only national mm -hmm. book prize in the whole of the country um, where children do all the voting for it. And because of that, we're particularly thrilled. So thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much to the children who voted. Yeah. Thank you very much to the everybody in the federation of book groups children's book groups and thank you to everyone involved and to my publisher barrington stoke for publishing it we are so happy with this this is just it's this is just a wonderful thing isn't it you can see how excited finn is because he's a character in this book as, as you know so thank you very much and um all the very best with the rest of the award ceremony and to all the other to all the other winners thank you ever so much and now on to the books for older readers this is a special category just for this year to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Book Award. Usually there aren't any YA books on the shortlist. But this year we have first Becoming Diner, written by Kit Duval and published by Orion. And next it's On the Come Up, written by Angie Thomas and published by Walker Books. And finally, Two Can Keep a Secret, written by Karen M. McManus and published by Penguin Random House. And for the winner, we go back to North Somerset. And the winner is... On the cover. Hey everybody, Angie Thomas here. Thank you so much to the Federation of Children's Book Groups for the Children's Book Award in the older category. For me, every single award that I win that is voted on by children, by the readers that I specifically target, that means the most to me. It's truly an honor to write for young people. It's truly an honor to write stories that they connect with, that they enjoy, that expand their imag imaginations, that help them better understand the world, um, that give them a microphone of some sort, that empower them to use their voices. It's an honor to be that vessel for them. So to know that they voted for this award and they chose um, my book as the winner, that means everything. So thank you to the thousands of children across the UK who voted for On The Come Up. Um, I'm so glad that Brie and her story connected with you and I hope that it empowered you to find your voice and to make some noise. Thank you again to the Federation of Children's Book Groups. Thank you to my publisher, Walker Books. And thank you to every single person who has ever picked up one of my novels and found themselves taken away by the pages. Hope to see you one day in person and celebrate in person. But until then, stay safe, be blessed, and thank you again. Congratulations to all the winners. And everyone who's been shortlisted is going to get a beautiful portfolio that's been created by the children, which is a collection of their responses to the book. I saw them last year and they were so lovely. So everyone will get one. And now, on to the overall winner. winner. And to find out, who is the winner of the Children's Book Award 2020? Over for one last time to North Somerset. And the winner is... D-Day Dog! Hello, 
Finn and I would just like to say a massive thank you um, to everyone who voted to make D-Day Dog the Federation of Children's Book Groups Children's Book Award of the Year. We are absolutely thrilled. We'd like to say thank you to the children who voted. We'd like to say thank you to everyone in the Federation and to my publisher Barrington Stoke for publishing D-Day Dog in the first place. We are absolutely thrilled and this, this is definitely the highlight of my career so far and probably the highlight ever so thank you for this moment. I just, as you'll notice we're at the Central Library here in Halifax where I live in Yorkshire and I wanted to come and accept and, and say thank you to the, for the award here because um, this, this is a really important place to me. This is where I researched a lot of D-Day dog um, and also if it wasn't for libraries I wouldn't be a reader for the fir in the first place. I wouldn't be a writer either. I wanted to come and accept the award here at the library. We are absolutely thrilled and thank you ever so much and um, we're going to go and celebrate aren't we Finn? Aren't we Finn? Because I've got Finn a little treat to say because he's kind of had a part in the book as well. Thank you. I'll stop rabbiting on but thank you ever so much. Thank you, Philip and Sarah. As usual, our younger members have given us an amazing shortlist of brilliant books. And I send my congratulations to the category winners and also, of course, to Tom Palmer as the overall winner. Now, remember, if you would like to send to any of the shortlisted authors a message, a piece of work, a writing or drawing that's been inspired by their book, then there are details on our website as to how you can go about doing that. Don't forget, too, that this film of the ceremony and the 12 short films of the shortlisted books will stay online so that you can share the excitement and the fun with your family and your friends. Well, the Children's Book Award clearly does not happen as if by magic. We have an awful lot of people to thank this year. The local groups of the Federation do all of the work during the year to bring children and books together and this year has been particularly challenging for them. Not only have they persevered, they've also helped with producing the films for today. So thank you to them. Now the publisher's donations to our testing groups mean that there's the widest range of books to be read and voted on in the first phase, which enables us to have the best shortlist going. This year's authors and illustrators clearly are, well, they are just brilliant, but thank you to them also for being willing to get involved in the filming and help us create today. There are many bloggers who hosted our shortlist blog tour. And Rachel Jeffries has created the most beautiful silver acorn for the overall winner, Tom Palmer, to receive. And she arranges the engraving on that magnificent trophy. Steph and Liam have worked their creative magic and technological magic to enable us to have all of these films today. And Sarah Stuffins is the member of the National Executive Committee who has been the driving force behind the Children's Book Award this year. She's also had to be particularly creative to overcome all the obstacles that COVID-19 has put in the way and make sure that we have this marvellous ceremony still. She's been ably supported by a number of other volunteers on the Executive Committee. Now, don't switch off just yet, because if you wait until after the credits, Sarah McIntyre is going to treat us to a drawing masterclass. We hope you carry on reading and enjoying books and hopefully voting for them uh, if you're in the testing groups for our shortlist for next year. We really hope to see you again next year in whatever format this ceremony is going to take then. winners and to everyone who was shortlisted and thank you to all the children who read and voted for the 2020 Children's Book Award and thank you for watching. 
And now over to Sarah. I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pencil and let's get drawing. Right, we're going to draw Neville and Beyonce's getaway car. So first, I want you to draw a circle down in the lower bit here, just about that size. And put your hands here, so I want about hands width apart, another circle. And then do a second circle inside of that, and one inside of here. So it looks like two big owl eyes. And then a little dot there, little dot there. And we're going to connect these with a solid straight line. And keep going a little bit here, a little further, and a little further on this side. And then we're going to do two little lines, one here and one here. Now we're going to draw the bumper. So we're going to start about here, go across this line a little bit further, and a second one. And then we're going to cap it off so it's like a sort of sausage shape. And same on this side. A line that slightly goes over the edge there and cap it off with a sausage. Now we're going to make a little line that goes up here a bit further and one on this side. And then we're going to do a line that goes all the way across, kind of like a frown shape. So a little bit going up in the middle. There we go. Now let's do the front headlight coming off like that and a stripe there and one off the back. It's a bit smaller. That and another line across. And just to make it cool, let's put a fin on the back. So a line like that and another here. And let's put the steering wheel right about. So it's kind of just behind the front wheel coming up. And the front of the windscreen, it's a convertible. And then a line, diagonal line down like that. Now let's draw Beyonce in the car. She's kind of a big potato shape, really. I'm going to start about here and come up to there and then stop. And then this line will just be straight down. And we'll put her little nose here. And put ears which go up down, up, down, and then a line that connects them to the head, another there, and maybe some little stripes here for her ears. And she's got some really cool glasses, so we're going to put another little sausage shape there. And then the arms of the glasses stretch back like that. And they go over her nose, and then you can just see the other side of the glasses right there. And she's wearing a little scarf around her neck. So two lines like that. And a knot, a little circle. And then two shapes kind of like leaves coming off that. They're trailing in the wind. And her arms coming up over the steering wheel. Like that and a second line underneath. And she'll have hair that's blowing in the wind. So you can draw as much or as little hair as you want. Little fur. And we'll make it really simple. We'll have to draw Neville, we'll just draw another head behind. So another Line like that, and down, and then his nose. Maybe we'll make him smiling. And you can barely see him there. You could give him his little mask here. He's got a mask on, but you can't really see his face, so we'll just color that in dark. And you can probably only see one of his ears sticking up, so up, down, cap it off, stripe, 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 and maybe a little bit more fur. Now let's do the back seat. Here's the seat here, a little sausage shape again. And she's got a door handle right there. And let's put the swag in the back. They're stealing stuff, so it's a bag, bag, big bag of swag. A line coming off, another line like that. And a kind of rippled line on the top. And you can even write swag on it. And then let's put the road underneath. That can be quite a jaggedy line. And there might be sort of gravel coming up from underneath the wheels because they're going very fast. Put gravel there. And maybe some action lines in the back to show their speed. And then it's up to you. You can design the car however you want. It might be polka dots, stripey. You could do a rainbow boat. I think I'll do that. But you design it any way you want and color it 
and add all sorts of fun stuff to it. There's my rainbow bolt. And finally, when you're finished, sign your name. Give your best artist signature. So I'm signing Sarah McIntyre. And there we have it, Neville and Beyonce in their getaway car. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you.